Hello and welcome to a new edition and a new season of Sand Shark Bites. We're back after the big uh, holiday break and uh, spring season is underway. I am, of course, your host, Justin Jarrett, Sports Information Director at USCB, and joined as always by Mr. James Duffy, Professor of English and all things Sand Shark <laughs> here at USCB. Seems like he's everywhere and he was on the mic on Saturday. We got things started. The spring season is officially underway. USCB baseball getting it started with four games against Northwestern Ohio last weekend. Took three out of four, including a 16-11 win to start things off with, with you on the mic for the County Channel and uh, just kept it rolling all weekend. The bats were, were smoking. Uh, four straight games in double-digit runs and double-digit hits. Only scored in double-digit runs seven times last year. I had to look that one up, but uh, and this already year have done it four, so <laughs> that is a great start. They, they scored over 50 runs over four games. 52 in four games. It's amazing. Uh, the Saturday's opener was, was almost four hours long uh, <laughs> with two innings, the, the second and the fifth, both having batters go all the way through and again some. Uh, made a mess of my scorebook, as it often does. Um, but a beautiful thing to just be there on opening day. And the crowds were great. The team was exciting to watch. It's a, kind of a half and half new and old. Um, people you're, that you didn't expect to be there are now there and people we've been waiting to see come up um, have really been showing off. It's yeah, great. Some, of, some of the veteran Sand Sharks, uh, Ashley Morris, Kyle Thompson with, with great weekends at the plate. Uh, Junior Del Torre had a great game on the mound. Cutler Lane uh, had some nice relief work. Hipster right-hander Cutler Lane. Cutler Lane, uh, who, if you don't know Cutler Lane, your life is still empty. It's, yes. Uh, it's, it's worth the while going out and meeting Cutler Lane. Indeed. He's, uh, a, he's a good one. He's a, an interesting character, to say the least. And some of the newcomers really impressed as well. Johnny Cole was fantastic, uh, wearing out the opposite field. Uh, Michael Johnson went 7 for 10 in that opening doubleheader. So, uh, yeah, some exciting stuff happening with, with USCB baseball. And it's funny because going into the season, uh, you know, there were, there were some attrition and, and some things like that for various reasons. And uh, Coach Llewellyn was kind of kind of giving me the Lou Holtz treatment. He, he had me convinced we weren't going to be any good. And then we go out and score <laughs> 52 runs and uh, take three out of four from a team receiving votes in the top 25. So He was, uh, really, he was really playing that hard. Yeah. But, I, but he wasn't even sure if he was going to have nine to field on yeah, any given now, game. So. Now, granted, the bench is thin. If, if anybody gets hurt, you know, the dynamic changes for sure and especially some of those guys in the middle of the order. But for right now, uh, assistant coach Pat Cottrell, the hitting coach, has those guys swinging it well. Uh, newcomer Jamie Strock with a great performance on the mound in game two. Um, Paxton Buckner pitched very well in game four. So, uh, you know, some good things happening there with the Sand Sharks. And, uh, and, and all of a sudden, the, the fortunes, the, uh, the outlook has changed a little bit. We're looking forward to a great season. I, didn't, I don't know what we were expecting, though, with Northwestern, uh, University of Northwestern Ohio, when what they brought to us, they cut, it's a long way to get here, mm -hmm. um, then to have four games in you know, South yeah, Carolina. And, we, and yeah, that's a, that's a good country. point. Um, um, you know, they, they are receiving votes in the top 25 in the preseason, uh, but they hadn't been on grass and dirt uh, until they got here. So, you know, I mean, that is, their, their field is covered in snow. And uh, so this was their first time outside playing baseball in several months. So, you know, that makes a big difference. And they, they made eight errors in that first game. It was uh, not uh, funny after a while. It was great to see the Sand Sharks winning, but uh, the, the idea that they just couldn't make good plays, they yeah. couldn't get hits. But they did keep whittling away at us in that first game. It was 16-11 it, it, was a lot closer than you thought it was going to be. Started out at 15-3 to three and yeah. got down to 15-11 at one mm -hmm. point. So, yeah, you know, the... Um, a part of that is, is Coach Llewellyn uh, taking a prolonged look at a couple of guys out of the bullpen that, you know, in a, in a conference game or a closer game, they probably wouldn't get quite as much run, but he wanted to see him work on some things. So, um, you know, th those things work themselves out. And, uh, you know, even the guys who, who got hit a little bit, um, you know, Coach told him, hey, you're still our guy. You're, we're we're going to stick with you. A couple of these um, guys who really, really didn't see much of last, last year, but uh, seeing Willis Dobson come uh -huh. up on, back on the mound looking, you know, got a few hits on him, but still looks like, He's got his mechanics all set up and ready to go. Cutler, again, came in and did Cutler really well. pitched very well. Gage Roth pitched well. Gave mm -hmm. up some runs, but uh, kind of had some bad luck and some, and some defensive lapses behind him, but, uh, but pitched well overall. So staff's coming together. And again, the bats uh, ranked first in the country right now in hits per game, second in runs per game, uh, second, I believe, in uh, on-base percentage and 12th in slugging percentage coming out of the weekend. So six guys in the lineup are batting over 400. 
Um, that's probably going to regress to the mean <laughs> a little, little bit. Um, but hopefully we can keep it going this weekend. Got Truett McConnell coming in. Uh, check the website and social media for official times on that. Tentatively right now we're scheduled, uh, original scheduling, 11 a.m. doubleheader on Friday and then a single game at uh, noon on Saturday. But possibility with rain coming into the area that uh, if the field takes on some water, we may push back, play a single game on Friday, uh, maybe 1 or 2 o'clock, and then play two on Saturday. We'll just have to... Uh, Play it by ear on that. They're going to pull the tarp tomorrow morning. We'll check it out. We're, we've also been talking a lot about the offense. There were a lot of hits and, and a lot of runs and, and a lot of great play. But uh, the, the defensive side, too, there was some really amazing stuff. Ashley Morris. Yes, um, Morris has continued to develop into a very good shortstop. Uh, Johnson made some nice plays at third. Uh, Josh Reinhardt and then McLean Hartz as well played pretty well at second base. Um, Cole didn't get a lot of chances down at first, I didn't feel like. But... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a couple mistakes in the outfield, but also some really nice plays. Saldivar in left, Cloyd in center, and, and Thompson was outstanding in right. So uh, just overall, defensively, yeah, solid weekend. Um, I, c I couldn't tell you off the top of my head how many errors we made, but it was about a third as many as, <laughs> yeah. as Northwestern yeah, Ohio. Northwestern made so. a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah, they, they struggled with the gloves. And again, first time on the, being outdoors. We, we take that for granted here because right. we've been outdoors from day one on, on January 2nd. Uh, except for a few days when we've had to work out inside. We've been outside on the grass and dirt, and uh, that's a big benefit for the Southern schools this time of year. <laughs> we yeah. hope it, uh, it will be a benefit as well on Saturday. USCB softball is going to get things started on Saturday. We've got St. Andrews coming down from North Carolina. They probably have been outside uh, as well. <laughs> but uh, opening the season against St. Andrews, I believe, for the second year in a row. And uh, Coach Laura Heberling's team, let me tell you, that is going to be an exciting bunch. There's no doubt going into the season They're already, about what yeah. expectations are for that team. They're excited in the class on campus, walking around. It's like they're it's leading up to Christmas all over again. Um, they're all a little nutty and a little antsy, <laughs> and uh, I think they all want to start. And they they, they 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 got some positions to earn. We got some new players and a lot of returning players. Yeah, um, it's it's going to be. It's going to be great. It's we just really just lost one player who was actually playing at the end of last season. We lost Melanie Goolsby, but she had been injured earlier in the season. So Allie Simmons, uh, who was our stud shortstop last year, the only player who's gone from the, that team at the end of the year, and uh, she's an assistant coach now. Mm -hmm, so she's mm -hmm. still a part of the program. Uh, everybody else is back, and we've added a number of, of players, including Emily Polly, who was in line to compete for a starting job last year before she got hurt, uh, Haley Brown, is uh, is looking like a, a an impact player. Amber Williams comes in from Western Kentucky and is probably going to be a starter in the outfield. So yeah, there's some competition all over the diamond, and uh, Coach Heberling is going to have the opportunity for once to kind of play the hot hand and and shuffle the deck depending on who's uh, swinging it well, who's struggling, and of course the two aces, Christy Cook and Ashley Lehman, last two pitchers to win Sun Conference Pitcher of the Year, are both back. So. It's going to be a fun season for USCB softball. There's such, there's such great players, too. And to, to see Ashley Lehman and a lot of these players who I saw them as freshmen and they kind of mm -hmm. came through and being young and, and awkward and kind of ready to play <laughs> in those first early seasons of Sand Shark softball. And now they're these team leaders. And to see them really develop into those team leaders has, has just been fantastic. The other dynamic about that team is you have those nine seniors who have been here since the inception of the program. They were on the inaugural team. They've seen it through. And this is their year to shine, and uh, you know that leadership and that and that motivation just can't be uh, can't be overlooked. That's or overestimated. <laughs> that is a huge factor for a team, uh, when, especially when it comes down to win or go home time, because they know this is it. Senior day is going to be a big day this year. It is, and in fact, they're going to honor a senior at each home game throughout the season because. Uh, Otherwise, we'd have to schedule the ceremony like an hour and a half before <laughs> the game to get it all in. It's going to be uh, quite a show on Senior Day. We're going to be honoring uh, almost a whole team. We're going to uh, know the schedule of honorees before that comes out so we can make yeah. plans accordingly? Yeah, I think so. Are you going to skip out on some of them? or? Uh you're going to be there for all of them. Uh, there, there's, <laughs> I may not make it to all of them, but there will be some that I know I have to make. There's I understand. A, a, I'm, I'm obliged to some of them to, <laughs> to show up and say. So that's coming up. Uh, the golf teams will be opening pretty soon. They're both ranked highly in the preseason. I believe the women are at number eight and the men at number 13. So uh, looking for great seasons out of them golf as starts well. this weekend for the men? Monday? You would put me on the spot. Yeah. I've been so focused on opening day for baseball and softball and, and my duties as official scorer and, and all those things 
that uh, I've kind of lost sight of the golf, but I feel like... Uh, I, I just uh, I asked because I had a golf player say he wasn't going to be in class next Monday because they were going to be at a tournament. That sounds right. <laughs> I think <laughs> they're both going to uh, Coastal Georgia next week, Monday and Tuesday, to play. So uh, that sounds right. I'll give him the benefit of the okay. doubt. All right, I will. Um, if I knew his name, I'd probably have a better idea of whether he should receive the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> okay. But uh, but we'll take his word for it, whoever it is. And then uh, Track and Field has their first meet in Savannah in two... Track and Field about to get going, two too. and Saturday. Uh, and Coach Kimball's got a good team assembled, too. Uh, never know, you know, exactly how it's going to shake out, uh, even until you get down to the conference championships, And because uh, Coach is always scheming, trying to find points wherever he can find them. But, uh, but he's Having brought in Darryl a lot Dunham of... run cross-country. <laughs> he's brought in a lot of athletes. He's got some pole vaulters. Uh, you know, he's, he's trying to steal those points wherever he can get them, and I know he's optimistic. And this is the first year that I remember that having track and field students in my classes that have been, like, Openly track and field. Uh, the, <laughs> it's, uh, you, you see the baseball players, the softball players, the soccer players are all kind of larger than life in the classroom and really participatory and loud about their sport and loud about their team. And now I'm getting to see that it, with the track and field players who come in. They, they make a big show that they're part of a team, part of the Sandshark community, and that they're really out there competing, not just for themselves, but for us. And, Speaking uh, of the community, boy, we have seen it pull together with the new recreation center. Uh, we moved into our new home. Uh, in January. It's fabulous. We have two full-size basketball courts, lots of activity in there all the time, even a little faculty staff game going Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon if you want to come out and uh, you know watch some high-quality, high-level hoops. Not really. Uh, yeah, it's but it's it, changed the, the dynamic on campus as well. It's, it has it's, been it's, fabulous. People are there, kids are playing. Um, it's it, it, it's someplace for people to go and do things in a, in a different kind of environment. It's just it's changed the, the, the makeup of pedestrian traffic and, and car traffic and I think attitude on campus. I think so. Fantastic. It really has become a centerpiece of campus. I know I've seen more student athletes in the in the past month than I probably did in the past three years combined. I mean they are just <laughs> in and out of there all day and it's really cool to be in that environment where we can see uh, you know the teams coming in to work out together and stuff like that. And um, it, It's definitely put, brought us closer together and we were already a pretty tight-knit mm -hmm. bunch but um, but it's really brought us closer together and it's been fantastic. Well, that's, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the snapshot. Uh, that gets you up to speed on what's happening here as the spring season underway. Uh, we're going to have Coach Brian Llewellyn from the baseball team coming on in just a bit to uh, discuss that opening weekend and, and maybe temper expectations a little <laughs> bit as we uh, move forward into this next weekend against Truett McConnell and then a conference series next weekend against Warner University. So we'll be right back with Coach Brian Llewellyn from Sanchark Baseball here on Sanchark Bites. Welcome back to Sand Shark Bites. As promised, I'm joined now by USCB baseball coach Brian Llewellyn. And uh, coach, a great start to the season this past weekend. Three out of four off of a team uh, receiving votes in the top 25. So I know you have to be pleased with uh, how the guys played this weekend. Yeah, I was very pleased with how we played um, from start to finish. You know, in the in the three wins and the one loss, I thought the uh, the the main thing was just that the guys played hard. They played with energy, played with enthusiasm, and uh, swung the bats a little bit. So pleased there. We've you've talked a lot in this preseason about uh, you know kind of we've we've had some roster overhaul from last year to this year. Um, you know, never know how that's gonna gonna play out. But you've talked a lot about how these guys that are here right now are guys who want to be here, and uh, you kind of saw that hunger a little bit this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, you know, we did talk about that a uh, little bit of a roster overhaul and and making sure that you got guys that want to be here. That's the main thing. Is you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get the most out of the, those guys, and and that's all we ask for. Just uh, bring what you got every day. Uh, give us everything you got, and, and, and you can do something with that. We, uh, we saw a lot from guys that we kind of knew what we could expect. Junior De La Torre, Ashley Morris, uh, Zach Holt, even though the numbers weren't there last year, we knew he could hit the ball hard, and, and eventually he was going to find holes. But some of the newcomers, uh, very impressive. Johnny Cole, Michael Johnson, great, great weekends at the plate. Uh, Jamie Strock on the mound, as well as Paxton Buckner, some of those guys, uh, very impressive in their Sandshark debuts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, you know, the guys that you mentioned, Junior De La Torre, uh, guys like that, that we, we knew what we were going to get out of them. And, and those are guys that kind of helped bring the other guys up to speed. But uh, yeah, Jamie Strock has been uh, very consistent all, uh, all fall and going into the spring, uh, just throws strikes, competes, gives us a chance. 
Uh, Johnny Cole obviously swung the bat well. Uh, uh, Michael Johnson as well. Um, you know, Kyle Thompson was a guy that that uh, you know has been in the program for a couple of years now, but um, uh, ha had a really good weekend, and so uh, really pleased with uh, you know the guys that we knew what to expect, and, and some of the new guys uh, that that have uh, kind of caught up to speed. Yeah, it was great to see Kyle. He uh, lost last season to injury, but uh, come out this weekend and, and do everything you want a leadoff hitter to do. He was on base all weekend, scoring runs, uh, even driving in runs in that leadoff spot. Very, uh, very solid weekend for him. Yeah, absolutely, and and that's something that that we've always known Kyle would bring to the table. Just that uh, that intelligence uh, that you kind of need in the leadoff spot. A, a guy who understands his role and uh, doesn't try to do too much. And ultimately, uh, uh, you know, just by taking what they gave us, uh, you know, had a really good weekend. We may not score 13 a game all season. I'm gonna just go out on a limb and say that, but uh, you have to be really pleased with the job that your new assistant coach Pat Cottrell has done with these guys, as as far as the way they are swinging it coming out of the gates. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know. Um uh, Coach Cottrell joining us this year. Um, he was the first phone call I made when uh, when we had that spot available, and and uh, that was just because I knew I knew what he brings to the table, and and um, obviously the knowledge and experience and the ability uh, n not only to do it but also to teach it uh, was key, and and I think these guys have responded well to that, and and uh, done a done a terrific job. So. Uh, it, it's nice to have a guy that, that can do that. Uh, Coach Gilmer did a great job with it last year, and and uh, Coach Cottrell has just continued on that. But uh, we, we've got some guys, like I said, I, I think the big factor is uh, that we have guys this year that, that want to do it, that, that are, are kind of that blank canvas, that are, are, are waiting to be painted, and, and um, you know, that, that have that willingness and desire to get it done. And... Uh Pat brings a, a lot of energy and enthusiasm, too, and I think you could see that come through, too. You saw guys playing the game hard. Uh, Johnny Cloyd comes to mind, Zach Saldivar. Those guys just go a million miles an hour, and uh, it was great to see that, that effort and that enthusiasm out there. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's really what we ask the guys uh, from day one. Um, two things. If we can do two things, if we can play hard and have fun, uh, we'll have a good season. And uh, we, we saw the guys do both. And, and you've got to have one before the other. You've got to play hard and then you can have fun second. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think those guys, um, you know, there's some guys, Josh Reinhardt, Zach Saldivar, uh, you know, those guys bring a lot of energy and enthusiasm and those other guys feed off of it. You know, Zach Colt's a guy uh, was in the DH spot for us, but just constantly in the dugout uh, providing energy and enthusiasm. And we talked a lot about that. You know, you're either providing energy or you're taking it away. And we felt like uh, guys the whole weekend uh, were just constantly providing. So very, very pleased with that. Well, the homestand continues this weekend. I uh, got Truett McConnell on, on Friday and Saturday tentatively. We're kind of watching the weather on that. Uh, could could lose that Friday game potentially. But then uh, on Tuesday, got Middle Georgia coming in. And then uh, a, a big conference series right off the bat next weekend with Warner coming in for three. So uh, try to keep it rolling, and, and we look forward to it. Thanks for joining us on the show, Coach. And uh, best of luck this weekend and going forward. We'll catch up to you again in a few weeks. All right. Thank you. Be right back with more here on Sand Shark Bites. At the University of South Carolina Beaufort, we offer small classes, individual attention, and an affordable education in an atmosphere that fosters diversity and achievement. We are students. We field nine Sandshark sports teams that compete in the Sun Conference. We are athletes. We are one university with two campuses serving the coastal areas of South Carolina and Georgia. We are the low country. We are the fastest growing four-year school in the University of South Carolina system. We are USCB. Welcome back to Sand Shark Bites. It's uh, about time to wrap things up. And as always, and I know you don't know about as always for our, our new viewers on the County Channel, but uh, as always, we wrap things up with our Athlete of the Week. And uh, really, as difficult as you might think it was with so many players playing so well uh, for Sand Shark Baseball this weekend, actually pretty easy choice. Kyle Thompson absolutely killed it. Senior outfielder from Merritt Island, Florida, went 10 for 20 at the plate. That's batting 500 if, <laughs> yeah. you're, if you're math challenged, and uh, that's fantastic batting average. He also scored uh, nine runs, which is a team high, and drove in eight out of the leadoff spot. That doesn't happen very often. So uh, Kyle Thompson, and also flawless in right field, just fantastic out there all, all weekend. So uh, Kyle Thompson, you're the athlete of the week. Keep it up. Uh, stay hot in the leadoff spot, and it's going to be a great season for USCB baseball. Well, that's going to do it for us this week on Sandshark Bites. 
We thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. And until then, keep those fins up.